Hey guys and welcome back to the episode 7 on the basics of Streamlit series. And today in this video we are going to look at how to use the beta columns function inside our Streamlit. To work with our beta columns function is really interesting. And in this video we will practically look at how to use that. And here we will create a simple form which retrieves all the information from the user. And without any further ado, let's get started. And now we are going to just build this part that is from the building address and let's do it. So firstly, let's open our code editor and here we are at our code editor and now let's create a new file and let's save it in our desktop and let's name it as the beta columns dot py and now let's import our streamlet so import streamlet as st and now we are good to go and before proceeding let's open our command prompt and shoot the terminal so cmd and here let's go to our desktop Top and inside my desktop I have the file beta columns dot py so streamlit run and in which I will type beta columns dot py and now let's click on enter and our app is getting ready and here we got it so here is our app and now let's type the following codes so firstly we need a select box because here we have a form for our country so let's do it so st dot select box where i am naming the box as the country and i will pass a value country here and before that let's get a list of values so let's take a variable country and in which we will pass some following country names so let's say USA um, India Canada C A N Canada and let's take UK and Australia so let's assume that our company is located in these five areas so and let's save this out and now let's click on always rerun over here oops it is streamlit and here we got our country and we can select any of them and the next thing that we are gonna use is our beta columns where we have to create two columns where the first column will be for our first name and the second column would be for our second name so let's do it so let's take a variable column one and column two and these are my variables and here i will create my columns so in order to create a column we will use the function beta columns and i need two columns and so i will pass the value two here and i'm going to use the column one now so with column one i will perform the following actions that is let's take a variable f name for our first name and in which st dot text input and in which i will ask the user to enter your first name and then i will go to my column two so with column two I will get his last name where it is also a text input and I will ask to enter your last name and let's say this and check in our web application how it looks and till now it's going pretty cool and perfect and let's move on to creating the third part that is getting the address as our input so let's do it st dot text area and in which 
I will ask him to enter your address and here you will start typing his address and let's move on to our fourth part that is city state and zip code so here it becomes somehow tricky because the you can notice the size over here the city state and zip so the zip column is very smaller in size and the state is little bit bigger and the city is even more bigger so here we can typically say that the column city is twice bigger than our column zip so we have to use our ratios here and the total ratio comes out to be 4 is to 3 is to 2 and now let's create three columns of the ratio 4 is to 3 is to 2 now so in order to do that we will now take three columns where the first column would be for my city and the second column will be for my state and the third column will be for my zip code so zip is already a function so let's say zc and here i will use st dot beta columns and here instead of passing value 3 of course i need three columns but instead of passing value 3 i will take a list and in which i will pass the ratio of the size of columns that i need so i need 4 is to 3 is to 2 and this is my column size and now let's start creating our columns so with city i will get the name of the city so let's take a variable c now and st dot text input and inside which i will ask him to enter his city and i will move on to my next column that is with state i will ask him to enter a state so st dot text input state and finally i will ask him to enter a zip code so let's say is z and st dot text input and in which i will ask him to enter a zip code and let's save this and let's move on to our web app and now here you can see the difference so our column city is way bigger than the zip code and state and now let's move on to our fifth part that is the billing phone number so here we will basically get our phone number and let's also collect an another information let's say email address so the email address will be um, let's say three times bigger than our phone number and let's do it so let's take two variables mail for email and pn for the phone number and st dot beta columns and in which i will take a list of values where i need where i need the column size of my column mail to be three times way bigger than my phone number and here i will take my column mail and in which i will ask him to enter his email so st dot text input where i will ask him to enter his email address and finally we will move on with the phone number so with phone number and st dot text input where i will ask him to enter your phone number so here you might have a question that why we are using text input for our phone numbers and zip code here too that is because only then we will get uh, these type of columns that we have here if not so let's say you use a number input over here so number input and here you will get these two boxes here too that that is for incre incrementing and decrementing your values and this will make our form a bit awkward and so we are not using the number input function 
and now let's move on to our last and final part that is having the save button so so let's create a button now uh, st dot oops dot button and in which i will name it as the save button where if someone clicks on my button save i will uh, give him a success message that stating your information was saved successfully and let's give some exclamatory marks and let's save it and and now let's move on to our app and here it's stating that duplicate widget key oops we have created two buttons over here so let's comment this out and now here you can see that we got a single button and now let's try filling this form so let's say i am from india and my name is adit and let's say i am from chennai tamil nadu my city is chennai and my state is also tamil nadu and my zip code is let's say 66666 and my email address is abc123 at gmail dot com and my phone number is 123666457 let's see and now i will click on save and it will pop up the message saying that your information was saved successfully i hope you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching like the video leave a comment down below and let's meet on july 16 with our episode 8 stay tuned Thank you.